this channel by subscribing and leaving comments. Before we end this, anything else you'd like to say to Renee? Well, nothing except uh, uh, good to talk to you, Renee. I, uh, sorry I <laughs> haven't made it up there myself in person, but maybe one of these days I'll get up there. I don't know. It just, like I say, you know, my wife is not the one that likes to travel so much anymore, so it, it makes it more difficult. But, uh, I've always enjoyed Renee uh, in the past. In fact, I, I can't say that I haven't enjoyed uh, practically all the people as Bigfoot, hunter, Bigfoot hunters. Uh, there's a few extremists, you know what I'm saying. There's some people that come up from Los Angeles and are going to catch one over the weekend and, and such as that that, that kind of got to me. But, uh, but uh, Renee and John Green and Bob Titmus and, and Oh, John Dana and a whole bunch of guys that are now passed away that I really very nice people and I uh, always enjoyed it. So uh, I uh, look back and I wished I'd have taken a more active role in some of these things but then I uh, my first concern was my family and, and our business and I, I did this at, uh, where possibly I I don't know I'm would like to have been more involved. I'd like to, right now. I, it would be great to uh, have had a, more of a hand in some of it. I have uh, this recently. Like I say, this uh, the sightings we've had around here recently uh, really peps you up. You know, you wish that uh, you get out more and see it. You'd like to see it yourself sometimes. So there have been reports coming in around here recently. Uh, yeah, and we're we're getting more reports from from years ago that we're finding. Uh, just through the museum, because of publicity, we're getting uh, reports all the time. I shouldn't say all the time, but we're getting reports uh, probably one a week uh, for a while, maybe one every two weeks this summer. Other so than, quite a few reports. Other than the one you mentioned of the lady and her son when he was riding the motorbike, any other re recent reports you can think of? Well, the, the most recent one, of course, was uh, about two and a half weeks ago when uh, these two young fellows, I mean, they're really young. Uh, one was only 15 years old and the older boy was early 20s. And uh, they were hunting up here. Uh, not, I don't know exactly where it's at. He promised to take me up ever so far he hadn't done it. But it's only maybe 20 miles up here. And, uh, they had just parked their pickup and was um, looking around to see what was there, you know, getting out and starting out. And they seen this thing coming down the hill and they said, well, there's a bear. And then they said, wait a minute, it's walking on its hind legs. And uh, so he told us, uh, this younger fellow, he said, told this 15 year old, well, shoot it. And he said, no, wait a minute, that's not a bear, that's, don't shoot that. 
And anyway, got closer, uh, and uh, he managed to, he had a little 35 millimeter camera with a, um, a zoom lens on it. It's not really a telephoto, you know, but it gives you a little bit extra. So he put it on zoom and, and took a couple of pictures and it was coming right for them. And they bailed out. They were scared. They took off. And uh, they had the pictures developed and uh, I seen the picture. It is uh, where it's enlarged. It's about, oh, maybe half inch high. And, uh, but it's starting to fuzz out. It's just not, uh, just too far away, but I, it's not a bear, it's, uh, and I don't think the film will fake. I think it's uh, absolutely, but it's not good enough to do anything with, you know. But anyway, that's the most recent. Um, we've had one here, uh, like I say, we've had the one that uh, people then saw, uh, one up here at uh, Big Flat. Uh, well, you know what Big Flat is, it's about 30, 35 miles east of Willow Creek, uh, they saw one over there in 97. <coughs> we had a, some other people that saw one uh, over by Myers Flat. Uh, and I can't remember when the time that was, but that had been too many years ago. And then we're having other stories that come in that, that people saw tracks in the past. Uh, a couple of people have brought in uh, casts that they have made uh, over the past few years. Uh, one was made over Trinity Lake. I uh, saw those last couple of weeks. Uh, they came in and they were rolling at the museum and, and this woman said uh, her son, her sons had made the, the cast and her husband said, now wait, you can't do that. You're going to give them to us. And her husband said, you can't do that. That's stealing. So he wouldn't let her do it. So uh, it's possible yet we may have a cast in the museum. Uh, I give her a form and I told her to be loaned. They don't have to give them to us, they can just be loaned to us. And uh, of course she's getting, trying to get permission from her sons to leave there. But anyway, we are finding more uh, cases of people finding that have made casts. Uh, when a local contractor here made uh, a cast, <coughs> uh, he and some other boys when they were in college, and he brought the cast in and, and uh, it's all broken up in pieces, and uh, I've got to glue it together this winter and, and for it. So uh, where we are finding more, uh, another instance that uh, a man uh, wrote and told us about the uh, 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 instance he had. Uh, he was, uh, and I can't remember the year now, but quite a few years ago, uh, he was hunting, uh, or they, rather, excuse me, they were mining, gold mining, up on the forks of the salmon. Uh, you know where that is or not. Okay, you go up the Klamath, uh, you come down, you remember where Salt Bar was? You come down the Klamath? Okay, you turn off right the path uh, towards um, uh, towards Happy Camp from there. You turn off uh, to the left, coming down the fork of the, the, the Salmon River comes in there. And he was up the forks of Salmon, which is about 10, 12 mile up there, and then there's another fork out there. Anyway, he was out there mining for gold, and he said he was living in kind of a, a uh, metal shack, a uh, uh, metal roofing shack, you know, tin shack. And it was late November and getting pretty chilly and they'd taken and made wood for the winter and they'd piled the wood around, right around, all around the outside of the, the tin to help insulate them a little bit. And he said uh, uh, they were uh, asleep this one night and he said all of a sudden he heard the most noise you ever heard going on, squealing and squalling, and, and uh, he could hear things just being thrown every direction, and he went on earth and going on, but he's scared to go outside. And so the next day he went out, and the wood pile had been just been torn to pieces, and but instead of being clawed like a bear, it was thrown. He said some of the pieces were thrown 15, 20 feet away, some of the wood. And what it had, it got down in there, and there was ground squirrels, and he went in there and hibernated. And he got in there and tore this wood pile apart and eaten the ground squirrels. And they found droppings with the, uh, some of the remnants of the ground squirrels in it. So this is one of the stories that we come in. And of course, uh, another one was that, uh, in fact, I knew this before, but I had also confirmed this man found 
after a, uh, he was uh, a ranger uh, working for the forestry in New Orleans, and he and another man, and <coughs> there come a, a snow uh, that one night, and they told them the next morning, now, this was unexpected, the snow, a little snowfall came, and I don't know, eight, ten inches of snow, and they told them to go out there and drive the, the back roads, and check and see you know, for fall down timbers. And, and I didn't realize this. He said when uh, timber, a uh, fallen timber, the snow will lay on the log. And he says, this shows up. This is real easy. You just have to see it real easy. So they told me to go out and drive all the back roads uh, in, in different uh, spurs and uh, check for the down timber, fallen timber. And he said, uh, so no one had any idea where they were going. just told them to go out and drive. No one had any idea where they were going. And he said, didn't even know themselves. And they went out there, and this one spur, <coughs> they went out on, and the uh, guys with him said, hey, whoa, look at that. There's Bigfoot tracks. And he said, he just laughed. He said, oh, come on. And he said, they pulled over, and sure enough, there was tracks. So he said, they, they followed quite a ways down the road, and then they found a place where it had come down a bank, like so, and the, the bank was higher up here and come down, tapered down, and you could see where he stopped up there a ways and come down a couple places and then finally jumped off of the bank where he about three or four foot high, but when he jumped off, his feet just kind of slid a little bit. And when he pulled his foot out, it kind of backed up an hour. And in there, he says, out, he says, I can reach my hand in there and feel those toes frozen in the snow. Now, mind you, this is fresh snow, so that don't sound right. Well, he said, he's after this, he says, I've checked, I, I, and he's a horse person, by the way, and you, so you can know on this, too. He says, I've looked, and he says, you know, where a horse will step and take fresh snow and your, your horseshoes out here, but it kind of compresses the snow in time. It's like taking a snowball and squeezing it and make ice out of it. He said, this is the way that was. It compressed it enough that it froze very quickly. Mm -hmm. And he said, I can reach my hand and it never froze. He says, now how on earth could you fake that? And he says, on top of that, how would anybody fake it? How would anybody knew we were coming in there? They wouldn't even know ourselves. And they wanted to track something. Yeah. And he said, that was all it was. It was that their set of their tracks and these tracks went down. So we're finding all a lot of these things. It's more and more. We had an incident here that a man uh, uh, from Idaho sent us a tape the other day from Idaho where he would had an incident uh, there in Idaho where he made wood. It was kind of a, a, a long drawn out tape, but it was interesting. He told a lot of things there that made sense. The boy's photo, <clears throat> the museum's supposed to be getting that photo, aren't they? What's that? Gonna well, he, the well he told me, you know, he told me that we could have a copy of it to put in the case. And so, you know, I'm going to get a hold of him. I haven't done so. I kind of, uh, instead of bugging him every day, I just let him go and uh, I've got to get a hold of him and ask him for a copy of it. How about your own experience with tracks? There's one I know that you mentioned where one had sat on a sandbar. I saw on a program once. Right. Stood on a sandbar. Well, uh, the, there's uh, the first tracks I ever saw. <clears throat> we knew they were there. Uh, it was uh, um, Betty Allen, of course. We referred to Betty, Betty Allen. She um, tried to talk me into. Go I wasn't interested. I wasn't interested in Betty. I I considered it a hoax, and I. Uh, just a bunch of guys having fun, and I never paid any attention. And she kept telling me that Al, she was, it's a, she was a personal friend, and, and uh, she kept saying, Al, you, you should be interested. This is important, and I, I'll come on. I don't. Anyway, she finally uh, talked me, and she said, came in the store, and she said, Al, uh, they called me. There's tracks up there. She said, would you take me up? This was a Thursday, I think. Thursday or Friday, I can't remember. Anyway, it was, uh, I think it was a Thursday. Anyway, she said, would you take me up there on Sunday? Uh, really, rather we wouldn't go up there 
weekday with all the logging trucks and everything else. So I said, sure, I'll take you up. Uh, and so uh, my wife and I and, and Betty and our two boys went up and, and in fact, I think a cousin of her was here and went up with us. We uh, <clears throat> went up there and, and uh, uh, we were told where to go. And the tracks had been down the road. And Packy was also told us that they covered a uh, few of them up with bark because uh, it was a busy road and they just covered them up with bark to keep them from being dusted out. So we got up there and they told us where we went and we found these big pieces of bark and took the uh, bark off. And of course, there the tracks were. And in fact, it's one of the casts I have in the museum there. And uh, sure enough, there was tracks and it, it kind of, um, yeah, it was okay. I wasn't real convinced at the time, but it was anyway. There was tracks there, and then I found tracks. The one you're talking about, uh, found down the creek in the, in the sand there, and so then I was hooked. And after that, I was hooked, and I, I went up a lot of times. I saw <clears throat> uh, one time the tracks were. In, uh, I found a track where. It was an old track, and I wished I'd have cast it. I mean, you think back and you wish you'd done things you didn't, but I didn't even bother to cast it. It was one track, uh, the creek kind of meandered around. Like I tell you, the creek was, at that time, was just a literal jungle with all the, <clears throat> the willows and the, and the uh, rhododendrons and everything like that. They were just a real literal jungle, and you'd just be out of sight in no time. Well, anyway, I <clears throat> found this one place where the creek kind of meandered around and he stepped in the water here apparently, stepped here on this little sandbar and then in the creek. So he only found one track. And it was, it was quite an old track. It had pine needles and see it had been after it filled with a little bit of debris. So an older track and I, like I say I didn't bother to cast it. I kicked myself now but I didn't. Anyway, that was one of my times I saw a track found myself. Another time I went back in there and I found this pool along, away from the creek, you know, how the, the creek had went all well, this way one time and it come back down here and left a pool alongside the, the mountain there. And uh, next to this was, right up next to it was this real damp sand. But back a ways was nothing but dry sand. Well, right next to this, there was a print that I would have all I could say was a knee print. And I didn't, I wasn't looking for a knee print, I didn't care, I was looking for footprints. But it was about that wide, in deep, it was deep in there. And, but where the foot would have been was black dry sand all cut up, and you couldn't say anything. It was all cut up, you know, you, you could see something had been there and cut it all up, but there wasn't any discernible track there. And so that was another time. Uh, then the one time where, uh, of course, when John Green, I was mentioned that before, uh, brought the tracking dog down, and I saw those two sets of tracks that night up there, the Blue Creek Mountain. But, uh, oh yes, and then the other time, one other time I saw uh, tracks was down there at Tish Tank, uh, where these the kids found these tracks, and I went down and cast them and made pictures of them. And, yeah, of all things, we lost all the pictures. Nobody can find them. She, their mother took pictures. I took pictures. We lost both of them. We can't find either one of them. I just disgusted with myself. But what am I going to do? We do. We only find all the pictures you saw there in the, in the museum or ones out of the newspaper. And all we can find. Anyway, that's about the extent of my uh, seeing tracks. Your biggest contribution is that phone call to Roger Patterson. I, I assume so. Yeah. Yeah, feel as if you my, my, my claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there uh, something about that where a doctor or something had seen a Sasquatch reported the week before or so drinking out of the creek? Uh, that, up here? Yeah, in Bluff Creek prior to Roger coming down. Someone Boy, else had seen one. If there's anything like that, I don't know about it. I couldn't say that is the truth. But I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about it. Mm. Was Green <coughs> Green and some of them fellas in the area at that time when the call went to Roger to come down? No, he was not. He'd already left. He'd already left. He'd, he'd left. Like he'd come in. John came in and uh, to see me before he left. And uh, so I, I know he was gone. 
the time. But at the time he was here, they were finding tracks in the area, right? Well, well, uh, John was here because they had found tracks. Oh, I see. And, and the fact is, uh, I just recently talked to the man who had found the tracks, and he said he told me he said that they, <clears throat> he was the last one out that night. Uh, the tracks I'm seeing that John uh, seen up there, and he said he was the last man out. And I, he says, I was the first man back in the next morning, and a long ways in there. And he says, there was tracks, those tracks were all over there, a long, a lot of tracks. There wasn't just a few. And they were lot up there, and then he said that the other way down was so far down there and so far back up. He said, there's, if you came up there and protected me, a lot of tracks. If it made one or two, it would be a little bit different story. But there was, I don't know how many tracks, but a lot of tracks. And, and three sets of that. And, uh, and of course, they'd run into problems. They were trying to save the tracks for, for uh, some amphipodians to see it. And uh, uh, everybody came up there with their plaster and their bucket and plaster of Paris. And he said, and, and I didn't know this till just recently. He, John told me, he said, Everybody got good casts except them. They were trying to save them for the science to see, but the public came in and just destroyed it, which was too bad. I didn't know that he had killed them recently. Oh, in them days, how word you get out so fast? Well, I tell you, it's amazing how the grapevine works. <coughs> and the, uh, the guys in, in the woods, and this is where it was. I think the guys in the woods all heard these tracks about this. And uh, I, I was surprised. I didn't know. I, I didn't realize just what had happened. But uh, apparently it was, you take a whole wood crew in there, and they say, we don't work today. We came down because they're waiting for these guys to come in with the tracking dogs and all this stuff. And you're getting uh, grapevines working well. In fact, you've got one day, they found them in the morning. Um, we get in there um, shortly before dark that evening. And so they don't even get out there on the trail until the next morning. You, you, uh, you've got 24 hours just went by before you can get on the track. And then, so then you've got a boy, ample time for the, the grapevine to really work good, and it apparently did. I didn't, I didn't realize it. And these were the tracks where somebody <coughs> walked up and down the dusty road, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, have there ever been reports of missing persons who go up in the hills and never show up? I've heard some stories of these. Yes, there are. This happens. This happens all the time. Uh, but I don't believe it's Bigfoot. Uh, I, this happened just uh, uh, this summer. Ever uh, found the person? You no, know, they didn't find her. There was a woman, <coughs> they had a retreat back in there some sort of a hidden retreat, I'm not exactly sure. It was over, um, where it was, and I think it was over out of, um, um, near Happy Camp in here. And this woman is in Siskiyou County, and the sheriff, all of them were looking for her. Uh, they finally give up, uh, couldn't find her. They finally gave up, and she never was found. But I don't, I don't think it was a case of kidnap or anything like this. <clears throat> of all things, my son, who lives in Saratoga, in the city of Ohio, or uh, Saratoga, in San Jose here, you know, where he okay, he was down at his, he called him and the fellow did his, and put an air conditioning system in for him. And so he wasn't there. His, he was up there looking for his aunt. His, <laughs> it was strange, a small world sometimes. But anyway, he was. He, I, he told me about it before I heard it up here. But it was over in a different county, so we didn't have quite a ways off. We didn't hear it here. Even though it was close to us, the news was all out by Eureka Way rather than Eureka say. So. But anyway, yes, this does happen. This happened a lot. Uh, but I don't think it's in a case of. Do you know if there's any distinction between male and female? If more males are missing than females? No, I don't think so. But I have, uh, I've heard this too, I've heard that uh, 
of course, you get a lot of superstition this way, too. Yeah, so I, I suspicion that's what it was. Yeah, Betty sure. Allen, yeah. incidentally, Betty Allen was really concerned because of her being a woman out there. She was very concerned. But I don't think this is the case. I can't swear to that, but I don't think so. How about screams? You get any words of screams in this area? I've heard a lot of people talk about screams or different noises they make. But I don't know. I've never heard it myself. I've been suspicious of them. A lot of times I've heard this, I've been suspicious, but I've never uh, um, anything to really say. I, I would really, reading John Bendernagel's book, uh, Bendernagel, I, I really was liked reading that because it did clarify, clarify some of these screams, some of the noises, smell, and things like this, where I thought was a bunch of baloney. Now, one thing was, <clears throat> I do know, this happened, I guess, uh, it must have been around 48, something like this, over here uh, across the river, right close here. One of them, when I had one of the first cast laying on the counter in the store, uh, this lady came in, she said, well, you know, that same thing went over in our house uh, 10 years ago. And now we're talking 58, uh, 60, maybe something like this. and. Here, so this we're talking about uh, 48 to 50, something like this over there, and uh, they found the tracks uh, well up and down the road. At that time, that road is paved now. But at that time, it was a dirt road. They saw the tracks, uh, and she says, "My uh, one of my daughters uh, saw it, and she said we saw evidence where it slept in the barn, or we think it slept in the barn. We don't know." And at any rate, um, uh, this was 10 years uh, before anything that ever came out. And uh, one of the things that happened on this, and it was, I, well, I get the thoughts together here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm slipping here. Um, oh, boy. I get this with a metal block here. But it was, uh, yes, it did happen. I mean, we've had things happen before. Uh, oh, I know what it screams. That's what it was like. Okay. Um, they heard it. A lot of people heard it over there. And I don't know what it sounded like. I do know this one man that I knew very well. He heard it. And he was, he, this guy uh, was so, he, if he was still alive, he'd probably be 100 years old or something. But anyway, as a young man, he had been all over this country herding cattle and so forth out here. And he never heard anything like this at all. But he wasn't willing to admit that this was a different animal. He said this had to be an animal that he had heard before something had happened. He said he thought it must have been a bear with a broken jaw. Okay, so I, one time uh, before he um, passed away and he was in the store, and then, like I say, he was. Up to the time he died, he his mind was good. He wasn't the guy that mind was uh, uh, bad. But anyway, he I said, well, Claire, what did you think uh, that was? He said, well, he said, you know, he said I figured it was a bear with a deformed throat. So he told me this himself. He, he here's an animal that's making a sound. Uh, I don't know what it was a scream, but he had a different sound he'd never heard before. And he, but he couldn't, wouldn't believe that it was an animal that, he didn't believe in Bigfoot. And uh, he said, eh, bear with a deformed throat. If you will, before I turn this off, why don't you confirm today's what, the uh, October? October the 6th, I believe. Yep, October 6th. And we're in? Willow Creek. At the? Willow Creek Motel. Willow Creek Motel, in the presence of John Miles, myself, Bill Miller, and Al Hodgson's. I appreciate you doing this for me. I know Renee appreciate it. Okay, well, good. I hope uh, that uh, you uh, time a little for me and everything. <clears throat> thank you for those books, by the way, Renee. I want to thank you for those books. I forgot all about thank you for that. And so I, uh, I think we should put one of those. In fact, I know one of them is going to go in a case up there. So. Uh, because uh, apparently they're out of print, probably, and, and uh, so we'll make sure we save one for posterity in, in, in the museum. Okay, thank you. <clears throat>
If you're enjoying all this rare and unique content, please show your support by subscribing and leaving comments.